Hello everyone, this is going to be a quick video to show you how to set up TaskWake and how to task with it. So, first off, you're going to want to go to this address and you're going to want to grab the latest release, which should be at the top of this web page when you get here, right? So, download this taskquake.exe and then you're going to want to place it into this Quake Lite folder. Or you might also have Quake Large, depending on which Quake you have. You can get this uh, Quake Light or Quake Large from Speed Demos Archive from the Quake section. And I also have this Task Quake um, shortcut setup, which sets some like video options and stuff for it. So you can also set that up with uh, whatever options you have or whatever options you want. And there's like a guide on speedrun.com on how to set up uh, Joe Quake. And the same should apply for Task Quake also. So I'm going to start the game, and I'm going to switch my OBS to, to it, yeah, there we go. So the first thing, thing you want to do when you're going to start working on a task is this command task script init. So you're going to want to init your script with test 100 meters zero, so it's file name map difficulty. and Difficulty is a uh, number from zero to three. Three is nightmare and uh, zero is easy. So it's typically you're gonna want to say either zero or three, depending on whether you want to do easy or nightmare. Right, so I set up the script and it sets up all like the initial commands of starting a map and setting up the whatever stuff, who gives a fuck. Uh, and I'm gonna skip to the end of this script via task script skip minus one. And you can also do this with uh, task script skip 8, which is the first frame you can actually do stuff on. Right, so a couple of use useful hard commands is uh, task hard state, which is also already enabled. Uh, it displays this like uh, HUD on the top left, which shows like what the console variables and toggles and commands are active on the current frame. and Another command you're gonna probably want to use is task hot frame, and it shows I'm on frame eight out of eight. Uh, so you can use that to like track progress and stuff like that. Uh, so the basic principle on how stuff works is I'm right now I'm paused, and I can enter commands into the current frame, and I just add it plus forward, and if I then advance. A number of frames you can actually see that I'm like holding down W and uh, going forwards right so in order to advance frames you're gonna want to bind something you can do bind f1 task script advance one and that's gonna advance your script by one frame all right makes sense and you can also do minus one which goes backwards. But you can also see like the screen is like flickering and causing everyone epilepsy. And that's because it's like actually playing the script from the start to the current point. So it's like trying to speed it up and play it there as fast as possible. All right, so you can also, I'm gonna go back to the beginning with task script skip uh, eight. Right. Um, so what was next? So you can see that I'm walking forwards. If you want to like go a little bit further forwards, you could do like task script skip advance like 200 on a bit on F3. And as you can see, I'm actually walking forward. Everything is like you'd expect, right? Um, it's very useful to like find a lot of this stuff on your keyboard, so you don't have to like type all of these commands manually. And you actually can't use this like task script advance command. Like if you use it in the console, it doesn't work. So don't do this please. Like it, uh, it counts these like console frames also. Don't misuse it, please. Um, so you're going to need to bind those. Uh, so the next thing is typically you don't actually want um, to use like um, plus forward or plus left or anything like that when you're tasking. You're usually going to want to use task edit strafe, you know, to set up your strafing uh, stuff, right? which allows you to, I can look in a direction 
and it's going to determine that I'm going to be strafing into that direction, right? So not right now, it thinks I'm going to be like strafing in this lamppost and colliding with it. And you, you can actually see that there's like a it displays this like a green line which turns to the red right there. It's like a prediction line, and whenever it turns red, it means that it's colliding with something. So once I hit the like the post there, it makes it, it goes red, right? Which is quite useful. And it's usually you want to like uh, strafe around quarters and stuff, and you want to go around them really tightly, but you don't want to hit them actually. So that's quite useful for displaying that sort of information. So I'm going to go pretty much straight forward, so I'm going to be saying optic 90, and then I'm going to confirm it via task confirm, right? And now if I go forward like 200 frames, you can see that I'm actually going forward quite fast, because it's doing like task strafing on the ground. And 10.77, right? Uh, so typically, obviously, you, you're also going to want to use jumping in tasks. And obviously, the idiot way you could do it is you could manually specify all the jumps. But typically, a good shorthand is to use plus tas lagaxt. And lagaxt stands for leap ground at a ground speed threshold. Rolls of the tongue really nicely. Uh, which most of the time when you're tasking, you're going to want to use this because it determines the point when it's actually faster to strafe in the air than on the ground. So it jumps automatically, right? Quite convenient. I'm gonna play at this task again. I think the last time I got well, like 10.77. And with this I got uh, 8.966. Which is uh, the current task record for this map. Unlikely to be beaten anytime soon. Uh, so that was that. I think some other stuff I want to cover is a uh, task edit set view. So what's quite uh, convenient actually is that I can I can say look in like any direction like this. I've set my view again. You can use the task confirm command. It's the same as uh, the edit strafe mode. So I set my view right behind myself right now. But as you can see, I'm still like uh, strafing. I'm still bunny hopping. And actually, what you'll find is that I'll get the same exact uh, time. So this is quite useful because that means that you can look anywhere. You can be shooting monsters. You can do, you know, anything you want. You can be shooting uh, grenade launches or grenades for grenade launch purposes, whatever, uh, while you're strafing. And it doesn't like slow you down at all. And if you want to return your view to normal, you can do task view your 999 and task view pitch 999. And when you have, have it set to those values, it returns to, it makes your task view your task strafe view and your task view pitch task strafe pitch. Uh, so you can see on every frame it's like going a bit towards that. You like slowly moves them. So should you find yourself in a scenario where I want to make this instant, right? Which this I normally advise against this because this looks like crap. It looks really, really, really ugly in the demo. But you can set task angle speed 180, for example, and set it instantly. This task angle speed determines how fast you can actually how fast the task can actually like turn the uh, turn the view. So default is five five uh, degrees per second or degrees per frame rather, uh, which is provides like a kind of a smooth uh, smooth animation. So I would advise usually using something like that. Right. So now let's say I want to add like. Um, I'm going to finish this task, so I'm going to add a task edit. Actually, I forgot if the command is still this, but it might be. Task edit add empty, yeah. So that adds like an empty frame bulk at the end. Uh, so now I can do task edit save, and it, as you can see, it saves it to that uh, file. And 
Now I can play the script via task, script play test. And that's pretty much it. I can still show off one more thing, which is uh, quite cool. Turn display capture back on. So the save feature actually, there's a lot of like uh, numbers here. So it actually keeps a list of like backups and stuff. Uh, so if you look at these like uh, timestamps on these files, what you'll find that is that, uh, oh, this is an extra one. Uh, it, it actually doesn't overwrite your script. It uh, just moves them into these like backup files, which are named like test one, test two, test three, etc. So when you use the save command, you actually don't have to be like really careful with it. There's no like risk of overwriting anything you've done. So uh, it gives like a history of these old old uh, old scripts, which you can delete if you want. But yeah, obviously that's quite convenient for not losing all of your work because the game crashes or something like that. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope you have a great time testing.